Good morning, good morning. Look at me being all prompt. I got a new chapstick. I don't know if I like it or not. Um, fascinating, I know, huh? <laughs> so good morning. So here's a fun thing. Um, I just got out of the shower. And while I didn't have time to put makeup on, I put a bra on. Now, this is going to be the riff that the folks who are tuning in early will get. And then also, if you kind of come in midway and um, uh, you, you missed a kind of, you know, you got me mid, mid riffing. I feel like I'm a jazz musician when I'm riffing people because I had this idea in the shower and I want to share it with you because it's kind of half formed, but I think it's fun. Okay. Now this is when you're going to see my brain kind of in action, which is this. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So, um, this came to me and I want to share it with you. Why coaching? Cause I'm a decluttering life coach. Why coaching is like a, not even a support bra. What is that? A, a posture bra. Okay. So, True disclosure, because it's just a handful of us here, and, and frankly, I know you're a good group, group of people. I right now, hopefully you, I don't even know if you'll be able to see. Well, I see a little thing right here. I'm wearing one of those um, uh, posture bras, okay? And this is what it reminded me of coaching, okay? So run with, just, just indulge me here, okay? Coaching is like a posture bra because you notice something is wrong and or something you know what something is off like my posture for example you know something is off in your life and you try to do it yourself so you say oh i'll just sit up straight i can do this myself i'll just sit up straight but then you realize that that's not working that you're still kind of posturing so coaching is like a posture bra because you notice something that you want to change and you've tried to do it yourself and you can't do it yourself coaching posture bra the other thing is you go and you say, I want to do something about this. And so you go out and research, what can I do about my clutter, about my posture? There are different things out there that I could do for my posture. And you notice the one that seems somewhat comfortable to you. Like, oh, I could do that. I could wear a posture bra. Am I going to wear like a, um, you know, like a, what do you call it? A, um, a giant what was that thing she wore? You know, Deanie, I think it was called, that um, one of those uh, Judy Bloom books, the girl wore like a thing because she had scoliosis. I can't wear that, but you know what? A posture bra, I could try that. So you find something you think is going to work for you. Coaching, posture bra. You find a coach that you think is going to work for you. And then you decide a number of things. Does And then you buy it. You buy coaching for me. You buy a posture bra. Then you try it on. Now you try it, you show up for a coaching um, consultation. Me, this morning, I, I was getting ready and I had a sweaty kind of, um, not even a sports bra, like one of my regular ones on because I just came from a workout and I wanted to wash that so I reached into my, um, my drawer where I keep my pajamas and my uh, bras and stuff like that there. And yeah, and assist, there we go, assisting in my, in my posture and I saw the posture bra. Now here's the important thing, here's, there's many important things. Coaching is like a posture bra because it only works if you use it. So I, I, with coaching, I share with you a toolkit of things you can do, you can try, you can think, you can write, you can do the decluttering, but it only works if you actually use the tool. So I bought a posture bra, but it doesn't work when it's sitting in my drawer. No, I have to put it on. Now, I had some resistance to putting it on because I said, well, what if it's going to be uncomfortable? What if what it wants me to do is going to be uncomfortable? But I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to, and this is another thing about coaching, I am going to put up with some temporary, possible temporary discourage, no, discomfort, possible temporary discomfort for a better long-term goal. So what did I do this morning? Again, it's just us, you guys. I'm Beth, decluttering life coach. I decided temporary discomfort. I'll try it on. I will try on this, this uh, posture bra, okay? So I tried it on. Now, the funny thing is, it looks, kind of, it looks kind of goofy on the insides, right? And I realized nobody has to know you do coaching. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you guys because it's just us right here. Coaching is like a posture bra because you don't have to tell everybody you're going coaching. You're just doing it. You can go on your life. 
And then you can say, hey, maybe this isn't that bad. I'm going to try it on and I'm going to experiment with it. I'm going to play with it. So right now I'm feeling pretty okay about it. You know, um, it's a little bit uncomfortable here. You know why? Because I'm used to sitting like this. So it's going to train me to do something I'm not used to doing, much like coaching does. And we're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So thank you for indulging me on my TED Talk of why coaching is like a posture bra. But I, I share this with you from my own life. So doing something different to get a result you want, that's what I'm here for. You are a person who is struggling with clutter. Because other than that, you might be hanging around in this TikTok live and maybe you're like, what's this lady talking about? And you scroll right past, that's fine. So my name is Beth, I'm a decluttering life coach and I help people who are struggling with clutter change their lives so they're not struggling with clutter anymore, okay? So I share this with you the way I do, which is me, me, myself, and I. boo da boo 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 Me, myself, and I, this is how I coach. I like to have fun. I like to be a human. I like to share with you what has worked for me so maybe it'll work for you. I say, hey, this worked for me. It's kind of like, hey, this, this chapstick worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you. I like to discover things that work for me. I experiment with me. I... You know, and then I share it with you, people on TikTok, but also my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. So that's who I am. That's what I do. And yeah, if you'll notice, I'll be like constantly kind of correcting myself. So good morning. What can I do to help you with your clutter this Monday morning? This last Monday is next. Let me look at the calendar here. I'm all, I'm all kind of calendar driven because life is short, people. So this is the last Monday of August of 2024. How can I help you with your clutter? Did you get the clutter? How about this? Knowing it's a Monday, if you look in your rear view mirror, I'm always framing things like I'm in a car. It really helps me. Maybe it'll help you. If you look, if you're sitting there in your car today and you're looking in your rear view mirror to this weekend, did you, um, did you get the decluttering done? You wanted to get done this weekend. Okay. Just ask yourself. And if you didn't, Get curious why it didn't happen, okay? Now, good morning, Rebecca. Rebecca is saying, what are your thoughts about storing extraneous stuff? So I think this is interesting because when I do a TikTok Live, first of all, I always read back the comments that I'm answering so there's some context. And I share this with you. If you're listening to me, you can putter around. You can get ready for work. You can be listening to your, you know, you can just be looking out on your yard. You can be puttering around, puttering and decluttering, doing the dishes, folding some laundry. Do something with this time that makes you feel good because you can always listen. So what I want to, so Rebecca is saying, what are your thoughts? What are my thoughts on the storing extraneous stuff? Well, I love the fact that you use the word extraneous. So what does that mean to you? Um, what are your thoughts on storing extraneous stuff? Now I will share this with you as a framework to me. All of the stuff in our lives falls into one of three categories, and some of them kind of pass in between the two. Surface clutter, stored clutter, so storing, yeah, and sentimental clutter. So we all need to store stuff someplace because we want to know where to get it when we need it. Like, for example, you store your coffee mugs, you store your clothing, you store your um, like this whole this closet right here is where I have all my photographs. You store, store your stuff. Now, extraneous stuff, though. What is your definition of extraneous stuff? Now, being a decluttering person, I always focus more on the decluttering before the storage. To me, you got to sort it before you store it. And when you sort things, you sort things into categories. And one of the categories I always like to think of is what's the stuff that I want to use now? What are the things I think I'm going to use and what are the things I'm using now? And what am I saving because I might use it in the future? So I will say this from my perspective, I don't want to, I don't want you wasting money. So I really, when I see the proliferation of storage unit places in my neighborhood, um, I see somebody making money, a lot of money off of people afraid to make decisions. I see somebody saying, you know what? People are afraid to make decisions. They would rather pay money for storage. And man, does that add up versus open up a box and make a decision about something in the box. I like to also, because I live in a capitalist society, I am a small business owner because I, my coaching is my small business. 
But I also like to kind of stick it to the man whenever I can. When I see somebody, to me, not erroneously benefiting from something that people struggle with. Okay? So I say this because I don't want you, I will do my best to, to help you not spend money on um, paying for storage. But even if you're storing it in your house and you're not paying for it, you're paying for it psychologically if it's weighing you down. Now, I know this myself because we've been in our basement for the last couple of weekends. And man, does it feel better even walking past the door to the cellar knowing that there's less stuff down there. Okay? So just get curious about that. You know, get curious about the stuff that you're throwing money at. Because I want you to throw your money at me. Think of how much you pay for storage, extraneous storage in a year. And think of that might be a fraction of what... Or my coaching may be a fraction of that. And then I teach you skills for the rest of your life so you never have to do it. I will say this, though. Sometimes when you're going through your clutter, you may need to temporarily, there are times in your life where you may need to temporarily have a third space to put things. I did this years ago when I moved um, jobs and I was living with roommates and I had just come from owning a bunch of stuff myself, but it was temporary. It was not a long-term solution because I was avoiding looking at the stuff. I had made a conscious decision of what I wanted to keep. And I said, I'm going to temporarily store it here because I know this whole roommate situation is temporary. And when the roommate situation is over and I move into my own apartment, I want to have this couch. I want to have, you know, this stereo, that type of thing. So... Rebecca, I hope that helps, and I hope that helps everybody. Decision-making, decluttering is decision-making, and decluttering is also getting in touch with yourself to say, what do I want today, and what do I want to accompany me in the future? I love this stuff. Solo Life Crisis is saying, I'm currently going through my hole downstairs and planning a yard sales. It's a wreck in here. Yeah, you don't want it to be a wreck, so your thing is going through your downstairs. You've trunked it down not your whole home, just your downstairs, and planning on a yard sale. You have a plan. I love it. Go for it. I hope it works for you. All right. I love it. Laura Given Voorhees. Good morning. My errands today. I love errands. I did so many errands this week, like little things that just kind of tidied up stuff. Oh, felt so good. Um, my errands today are donating various things to a few places. Yeah. So notice this about Laura. Laura, notice this about yourself. One size may not fit all for you or this bra that I'm wearing. I think I'm doing pretty good so far. One size may not fit all as far as the stuff you have and where you want to donate. You may feel good donating things to a couple of different places. If that good feeling helps you to get out into your car and drive around and donate things, by all means, do it. I don't want you feeling bad about getting, getting rid of your stuff. It's not about feeling bad at all. It's about feeling good. Okay, and I love this. Cat is taking me on a walk with me the first part of the session. I love this. Cat, I will share with you. It's kind of funny. I have, and now that I'm at my desk, notice how I've been on the patio um, a couple of days. I will be out there as long as I can. This is how I run my life. I want to do the things I want to do as often as I can for as long as I can. I know myself that there is a TikTok live that I'm doing next week because I wrote it down. Because now I have it in front of me. I can, you know, totally look here. And I know there's one. Yeah, next Thursday I have a TikTok Live scheduled that I will be starting on the end of one of my walks. Because I wanted to do a TikTok Live, but I was walking home from something. So I love that you're bringing me along for a walk. A morning walk is a great thing, you guys. i got to share. Getting your body moving, getting some energy, getting your muscles moving. It gets your brain going. I come up with great ideas when I'm on my walk. I suggest it for you, too. Yeah, and I will say this. User1963 is telling, is suggesting to Laura, I won't say tell, please donate to businesses and charities, not-for-profit places, but I will say this. I don't want anybody here. This is my this is my, my thing, and I, I, I would like to thank user1963. You didn't mean it in this way, but this is my yard, and these are my rules. I don't want anybody here donate-shaming anybody. We all know how hard it is to release items that we've been struggling with. I don't want anybody here making it extra hard on anybody else. This is when I say, you do you. You donate to where it feels good to you. I'll donate to where it feels good to me. Now, yes, I have thrift store of, of literally two blocks away from me that I've donated to. And yes, 
there's a goodwill in my town. And yes, I have donated to the goodwill. You know why? Because it has been easier for me at times to drive through, dump it at their little bins and get going. Do not shame anybody else for their decisions. Stay in your own lane as far as that goes and make it easy on yourself, okay? Now, I love this. Julie is saying, yes, I did. The winter stutch was filtered through and purged a lot. I love it. Notice the word purging, though. Notice that, you know, binging and purging. You talk about that with anorexia and bulimia and all that. Purging is literally that, that act of getting rid of stuff you don't like. But there's a bit of violence in the purging. I don't like that. I like to just say I'm just releasing it. Kind of like a fart. <laughs> I don't know where I came up with that, but you're releasing something that you're holding in that you know would feel so much better if you let it go. But it's more like a toot than a <sighs> Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, somebody, user 1963, has started to sell stuff online. Rock on with your bad self. I have done that myself. I love it. Laura is going to label consignment stuff while listening to you. I love it. Um, Rachel says, would it be cheaper to rebuy the stuff than store it? That is a question you can ask yourself. Yeah. And also just, just kind of getting cool with who you are and who you were and who you used to be. Now I'm a life coach. So I talk about my people in the past right now we're in the present, but also your future. This is where I love to live is from here on for decades. I used to live only in the past and look back. I was afraid to look in the future because I didn't like what I saw. So I just kept on looking back. But notice this. Do you even want to be the person who does uses that thing? I'll be honest with you. My life has changed post-COVID. When I was down in the basement, I was reminded of how many, how it was only twice a year, but pre-COVID, my husband and I used to do two big kind of blowout parties a year. So I have kind of those aluminum chafing dishes and sterno cans from that time. It's been about five years since we've had one of those parties, and I don't know if we're going to have one again. But I would like to think that we will, so I choose to keep that. Now, we'll see how that pans out, but it's also because we have such little clutter in the basement. That clutter that says, yes, I want to be that person, isn't taking up much room, so it's cool to keep it. Okay? Good morning, Carla. Nice to see you. Okay? You know? Um, Bobette says, can you donate clothes, clothes to a nursing home? No, I don't know if you're asking that to me or to somebody else, but yes, if you have clothing, ask your local nursing homes if somebody needs something. Adopt an old person that doesn't have any family. Find out what size they are. Maybe you could even say, oh, oh, I'm hanging out with Betty. She's at the old age home down the street. She doesn't have any good clothing. Does anybody I know wear a size 16? If that's not your size, you could, you could have fun with it. Okay. All righty. Now I missed, okay. I love this. Carla is sharing a victory. Now, Carla is one of my one-on-one -on -one clients, so I love this. Y'all, she's from the South. I'm not, so I call that out in a loving way. Um, I have a victory from yesterday. I am giving my soon-to-be ex a bedroom suite and living room suite. He needs it. I need to be rid of it. If we can come to an agreement, we both will benefit. Carla, what a freaking rock star you are. Look at you making your life better and making somebody else's life better and coming at it with love in your heart for you could easily be petty and say, screw you, you're not getting what I have. But notice the big heart you have because you're awesome to say, I don't need this. And even though you and I aren't getting along, I see you struggling with not having furniture. I've got this furniture. Do you want my furniture? You rock lady. That is massive Good stuff right there. Okay? Good stuff. All right. Laura is saying the place where I can sign stuff gives scholarships to my town's house school, so I feel good about it. Yeah. Um, I love it. Finding a place where notice people. And this is the this is totally where life coaching and decluttering right here in the in the Beatles, where is it? In the all you need is love section of your body, right here. All you need is love. Feeling good. Feeling seven up. I'm feeling seven up. Um, feeling good about what you do makes you want to do it more. It's kind of like this lovely drug that your body produces. There's all sorts of chemicals. When you start to feel good about what you're doing, you crave that. You want to do more. When you feel good about it, you want to do it. On the flip side, if you don't feel good about it, you're probably not going to show up and do it. Strangely enough, you guys have been with my journey in the past few weeks where I 
came back from a whirlwind of travel, so much travel and not working out that you guys have seen me coming and being like, oh my God, I'm achy breaky. I went to this workout class. Now I really dig it. I dig it. I love feeling my muscles. I love feeling a little bit stronger every time. I really am grooving on it, you know? Now, Vivi is asking, is online selling easy? Now, I love this because I have my own perspective, but I know all y'all do too. And I will share this with you and to everybody right here. Things are as easy or as difficult as you believe them to be. Somebody here can think it's very easy. Other people can think it's very difficult. What I will point out, because I am a process-oriented person and I have sold things, is there are a lot of steps that you go through in order to sell something. You have something, you want it sold, you want to make money from it. This is destination. See, it's like a road trip, okay? So you start here with something that you think is worth some money, but then you realize you have to go through all these steps to do it. Before you even start, Vivi, I would look at the stuff that you're thinking of selling and saying, is this worth my time? Is the money I'm going to get at the end worth the amount of time and effort I'm going to have to put in? I never thought strategically about this, about a lot of things. But I will say this, when you start with the end in mind and you say, is that going to be worth it to me? It helps you make answers that you, it make, helps you make your decision right here. Okay. I used to, I used to um, sell stuff online. I used to think it was fun. This was seriously over 20 years ago. Actually, I think about it probably closer to 25. When eBay first came, I thought it was kind of fun. Ooh, this is fun. I can make money. And there weren't a lot of people. Now there's so many people doing it. There's so many rules. To me, I don't do it anymore. I get, ah, uh, I would rather give something away than to go through all those steps to sell it. I have sold a handful of things in the last many years. I literally have one more item that I know about that's in my possession that I might sell online. But I would much rather find somebody local to sell something to or somebody I know. But you do you. Experiment with it. See how it feels to you. If you like it, do more. If you don't like it, try something else. Rhea says, how do you get motivated to get out of bed and clean? How do I get motivated to get out of bed and clean? I love the feeling of a tidy house. I love waking up and walking into my kitchen and being like, ah, oh, this feels so good. Instead of, you know, instead of, you know, seeing the dishes piled up and going, starting my day with the remnants of yesterday. Oh, I got to do the dishes. Oh, I love waking up and all I got to do is hot in my cup and make some tea and go plan my day. I say, I, I do things to get myself where I enjoy doing it. This is the destination part. So Rhea, this is the destination that I talk about. This is why I call my coaching destination decluttered is starting with that end point in mind and, and having that end point like a destination when you're traveling on a road trip or a vacation, getting excited about where you're heading and getting that excited energy imbuing the actions you take to get to where you want to go to means that you've already kind of energetically got that energy from the end before you've even started. And that is going to be the fuel. That's going to be the gas in your tank to encourage you. If you're not encouraged, if you're not getting up, I bet, honestly, and, and you're not particularly thrilled. I mean, trust me, I am no June Cleaver. I do not jump up out of bed and go, yippee, skippy, I'm about to. No, I do the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Forget about your worries and your strife, something like that. So the way my kitchen looks, looks right for me. And it feels good to me. And then I feel good when I walk in my kitchen. I want to feel good as much as I can for the rest of my days. So one of the things I do to ensure I feel good in the morning is I make sure that my dishes are in the dishwasher at night. But also when I wake up in the morning and there's like, oh, there's a handful of dishes. It's not a whole pile because I don't let it pile up. I will be like, okay, no big deal. I'm just going to put these dishes in the sink. Or if they're my husband's dishes, I'm like, dude, put your dishes in the sink. Okay. So notice these things, okay? Bobette, you're welcome. She's saying I'm awesome. Oh shit, I, I, I often will hit the wrong button here. Uh, thank you for all you do. You're welcome, all right. Trying to, try to donate an old, car, an old car, scared to sell it online. Yeah, notice the fear, people. That's gonna be, fear is so fascinating. Do we even realize, do you even realize how much fear has affected your life? Now, I do. 
because I coach and I look back in my history and see where I made a decision based on fear versus love, love, love. Fear versus love. Oh, it's the internal, it's the eternal struggle. What side do you want to be on? I'm, I'm team love all over the place. I love it. All right. Um, love it that people are recommending places to donate. Um, there we go. Rebecca says, once I had to trash an item rather than donate it because I felt it had such bad mo mojo. Notice that. Notice the energy that we imbue things with. We are human energetic creatures telling stories. You had a story about that item that made that item not just be, you know, a mug that came off an assembly line somewhere overseas, but it had such energy in it that you said, I need to put this in the trash. I need to symbolically throw away that negative energy because I don't want to touch in anybody else. I've done the same thing myself and I will continue to do so. The cool thing is though, I will share this. Talk about one of the things I help my clients with is boundaries. Not just in time, but in noticing what's coming into your life and stopping it before you allow it in. Now, I didn't used to do this. So, so when I started decluttering, I had a lot of stuff that I should have said thank you, but no, earlier in the process. I didn't do that. That's okay, but I'm better at it now. So I'm better at recognizing, is that a good vibe or a bad vibe? If it's a bad vibe, I'm like, mm, no, thanks, but no. I don't want to hang out with that person. I don't want that item. Thank you so much. I have love in my heart for what you're offering, but I'm putting up a barrier. I'm putting up a boundary and saying, I don't want that in my life because I love how my life feels and I don't want to insert any kind of negative energy. Dude, negative energy. But I, you can sell when somebody has a good vibe and somebody's got a stinky vibe. I don't want that stink. I don't want that smell in my life. Okay? Aww. Braille Mommy says, many years of health problems within my preemie hubs and flood led to clutter and mental drain, but seriously, small steps. You guys, small steps will do it every time. I feel like I should have a song for that, but I currently don't, but I'm going to work on it. I wish I had learned this earlier in my life. I didn't, but that's okay because I know it now and holy frickin' moly, does it change my life and I, I, I show up rabid with enthusiasm to share it with you earlier in your life than later. At least you're hearing it from me now. Whatever age you are today is the youngest you will ever be. Today is the youngest you'll ever be. Think about that. You're learning things now. You can do different things now, no matter how old you are. That's my MO. I'm almost, I, I, I got to stop saying this. Notice your habits. I, I've caught myself a couple of times. I'm almost 60. No, I'm only 58. Notice how you can frame something and make you feel crappy or make you feel good. Stop yourself making yourself feel crappy. Practice saying things that make you feel better. Okay. Notice this. On fire for you. Good morning. I love it. Um, oh, Carla is saying, thank you, Carla. I'm just catching up with these things. Will you say the nickel dime quote, please? I'm giving a long distance dedication like Casey Kasem out to Malena Rodriguez, I think her last name is. I'll have to check because I only know by Malena. Malena from Malena's Vintage in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Google her. She's on here on the TikTok. She does an ace job. She is such a freaking awesome businesswoman. She sells um, vintage clothing. And I have purchased things from her and I have sold things to her. I actually walked past her store yesterday and the only reason I didn't go in it was because she wasn't open. She said to me once when we were talking about people and selling items and things like that, her quote that I now lovingly share with you is, would you like a quick nickel or a slow dime? Would you rather have something now or hang on to it with the possibility of getting more? I like a quick nickel. You know what? Because I don't want the energy of hanging on to this stuff just to make another nickel. That's me. Fast nickel, slow dime. Quick nickel, quick nickel kind of rhymes. I don't know. I'm messing with it. I'm riffing. But you get the idea. To me, my life without the item feels better than me hanging on to it, hoping to get the money. Now, this is kind of a case-by-case -case basis, as I've mentioned before, and I'll mention it again. There may be those rare instances where you're going to be psyched that you hung on to something, but it's because you have a feeling it's worth a wicked lot of nickels, a wicked lot of dimes, because I had something that I thrifted, crap, 2003 or four, and I paid five bucks for it. But even then, because I thrifted for years, and I, I was into that, I was, I then in the past year sold it 
in auction, I made $800. But those things are like the unicorn things. Everything else we have, if you bought it at Target, it's not worth what you think it is. Okay, there we go. 1138 said, let's tap Beth to get to 10K. I'll take 10K. Um, Patty says, my cats motivate me to clean. I have two very clean cats. Judgment daily. Yeah, notice how animals tidy up or not. You know, I love it. Kitties, and look at how you take care of your kitties. Now, I say this because sometimes we take care of our cats better than ourselves. Now, I don't have cats, but I had a dog. Having them on a routine. Having them cleaning up after them. Making it so their bed is nice and tidy. So they have toys. So you're feeding them at irregular interviews. You're getting intervals. You're getting exercising. Are you treating yourself as well as you treat your pets? Life coach here trying to help you with your life. Okay? And I love it. And Vivi says, once it's clean, maintaining is a breeze. Akuna Matata, my friend. Akuna Matata. All righty. What do we go? Um, all right. No sound on my TikTok, said Barbara. Is it just mine? Um, yeah. People are hearing me, Barbara. So maybe you can, um, yeah, go out and come back in or try, you know, there's a couple of different things. Um, all right. Vivi is saying document. I think you mean distraction is blocking me. Put on your blinders. Chunk it down. Put on your blinders. I always think about this because I am, I may be old, but I don't remember the horse and buggy days. But this is what the picture is in my head, and I'll share it with you. The town that I grew up in has a funeral home. And every Christmas, that funeral home from back in the day would put out like a horse and buggy with like the, the wreath on the horses or like the little ivy, the, the, you know, the holly and the ivy around it. And the horses had these blinders on them. And this was so the horses back in the day, it was like a little kind of thing, a little leather thing on their bridle so that the horse wouldn't get distracted by all the stuff, crazy stuff going around ah, and go freaking out. No, it was to keep their eyes on the prize and moving forward. So do this to yourself. Put on some blinders. Chunk down what you're doing. Don't get distracted about what's over there. It's like keeping your eyes on the road, people. I have to remind my husband of this often. He'll be like, whoa, what happened over there? What happened back there? And in the meantime, you're not looking forward. Because if you're looking to the side and you're looking to the side or you're looking backwards, you're not paying attention to where you're going and you could hit something. Okay? Notice these things. We've only just begun. Cat Roby, that's a good one. Uh, we all, all have only just begun. I freaking love that song. God, I hear the carpenters and I just want to cry. So beautiful. Um, Jacinta is saying, I'm taking the small steps. Everybody takes small steps, step by step. If I was that era of Gen X, I would totally do the new kids on the block thing. Day by day, one tiny thing adds up. Hang in there and work at your own pace. See, we're all hanging in there, folks. You know, I'm going to back up here. There we go. On fire for you. It says, we have horse and buggy riders here in NOLA and they all have blinders. Yeah, because I've been in New Orleans. I can imagine the distractions down there, huh? Yeah, and I love it. Yeah, as you said, the analogies of the backseat drivers. Yeah, I will share this with everybody. In case you don't know, my this is how I run my world. And man, if you know how awesome I love my life, you would want to adopt this too. I picture myself every day, every moment in the driver's seat of a car. The car is my life and I'm, I am the driver, but I'm not the only one in my car. I have two invisible passengers. I have my co-pilot next to me, who is pure 100% love. People could call it God or spirit or like your BFF or the universe or my soul, whatever that voice in you that is always just showing up in freaking besotted love with you saying, whatever you want to do, let's do it. This is going to be fun. I let's, let's live, live, live. Oh, this is going to be fun. And in a good way, not in a crazy eyed, like, let's go, you know, knock over some banks and, you know, uh, what do you, Bonnie and Clyde it, okay? But that really, you know what? I believe in you and you can do anything you want. Let's freaking go wherever you want to go. Co-pilot energy. Me, if you think about, you want to think co-pilot energy, you think of me, okay? That's how I show up on these TikTok lives and when I coach people. However, it isn't just you and me in the car, right? You got somebody in the back seat. They don't call them a backseat driver for nothing, now, a backseat driver, you know the, the phrase, somebody who can't drive, but man, are they telling you how to steer? And if you're going too fast, you're going too slow, you took the wrong thing. I'll be honest. I can do this even in real life. I have to watch that myself. Ah, there's a bug. It wasn't a bad bug. It was just a bug. Your backseat driver, picture your backseat driver, not as something scary, 
but as a scared little kid in a car seat. Your backseat driver is fear of change. Your backseat driver is afraid of change because it's afraid you're going to do something and get yourself killed. Long story short, you know you're not, you know decluttering is not going to kill you. It may kill off a previous version of you, but what I say is quiet down your backseat driver like you would a scared little kid. When they're quiet and work on getting quiet, then everybody in the car moves forward with a much better vibe. So that's what I, that's how I do it. This is how I do it. All right. Um, Lindberger is saying, I liked your idea of taking a picture before working on one section at a time and you can see progress. Yes. I do this with my one-on-one -on -one clients specifically because photos help you not only chunk down because you're only focusing on the, the square footage between the edge of the, the, you know, the inside of whatever you focused into on that photograph. Also, a photograph is a fixed moment in time. Everything else is not fixed. Everything is going to move. But what that does is establishes where you started so that when you stop, no matter what you did, even if it was throwing away two pieces of trash and putting things into the rooms that they belonged in, if after you're done with 15 minutes even, you take a picture from that exact same angle, you have made a difference and you can see the difference. I like to call this evidence because you are, you are submitting your evidence to the court that's inside you that says, ah, you didn't do anything. Oh yeah, look, I get pictures of what I did. So shut the fuck up to the kids in the back seat. You know, it really helps. It's like reminding yourself of, yes, when I show up and do a little bit, it makes a difference. Every little thing you do creates the world you want. What are you gonna do to create the world you want? Every little bit helps. And especially when you know that you can quiet down the fear, when you quiet down the fear, you just have more room for love. And not just love for yourself, but love for the people in your life or whomever you decide to focus your love on. Okay? You know? Yeah. Um, hope that helps. What do we got here? Boop. All right, we got a bunch of more comments, but real quick. It's 9.37 where I am, Eastern Time. In case we haven't met before because I've been on for about 40 minutes and I know people come and go. This is cool. I don't, you know, lock the doors or anything. Uh, my name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach and my coaching is called Destination Decluttered. Um, I will offer this to you. Oh, this is cool. So somebody just signed up for my mailing list and I will just encourage you all. So here's the deal. I'm quickly just looking at my stuff here, but I'm not going to get distracted. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people and I freaking love it. Because I coach on Zoom, first of all, I don't come to your house. I don't want to touch your stuff. Heck, you own your stuff and you don't want to touch it. So why would I want to touch it? I'm going to touch it. Um, I coach people on Zoom. but the, And the cool thing is, because I do that, I coach people. And as I look on my um, map of the United States, I coach people all over the country. In fact, all over the world, if I wanted to. Because if People, I don't care where you're cluttered, I can help you. Um, I have a 10 session package, it's paid coaching, and it rocks, I love it. And I love it so much that I love to offer it, but I will say this, currently right now, the way my schedule is, I do not have even one consultation slot available in my calendar for the next couple of weeks, because I'm traveling and I'm coaching and I'm consulting. I say this as encouragement. If you are considering, you're like, ooh, that might be interesting, a one-on-one -on -one coach. What's, tell me more, tell me more. Um, get on my mailing list. Go to my website, destinationdeclutter.com. It is a free mailing list. All you need to do is put your email in there and um, you'll get a really, you'll get a welcome email with all sorts of good information, invites to monthly Zoom. I'm gonna be doing some workshops, all sorts of fun stuff, destinationdeclutter.com. Sign up for the mailing list and the people on the mailing list not only have the schedule for when my TikTok lives are, but also they're the first ones that find out when I have consultations and if they want to get into coaching, okay? Hey, I was going to say, um, Be uh, ID Princess, nice to see you because you're a couple of um, time zones away from me. Beth's coaching is so helpful. She's great to work with. Thank you very much, okay? All right, Rebecca, you got to run. I get it. Every little thing we do is magic. Yeah, Cat Roby, I am such... 
my father's daughter. My dad used to embarrass us because he would burst into song at any point. Most of my parents do it, so it's just genetic for me and it's fun. Um, all right. Hi, Jess from LA there. Good morning, Jess from LA. Again, somebody in a different time zone. We didn't get decluttered. We didn't get cluttered in one day, so we're not going to unclutter in one day. Yeah, it's like gaining weight. And I will say this, the good news is about decluttering, it's so much easier to declutter than it is to lose weight, especially in a female menopausal body. All right, I am proof positive of that. All right. <laughs> so, all right, I'm backing up. Um, I love it. Kat says, I have my Beth blinders on till the end of TikTok. I'm cleaning the kitchen. All right. So when I do, Kat, I, at, the end of the, at the end of the call or whenever you're done in the kitchen, I want you to call, you know, chime in and be like, look what I did so we can all give you a high five. Okay. 80s girl. Oh, inter interesting. 80s girl forever says, my, maternals, my maternal grandparents lived blocks away from the carpenters in Downey, California. Karen's voice was angelic. Yeah. But here's the thing. I will share with you. You know what the heartbreak is? I'll try to rope this into coaching, but Karen Carpenter didn't feel good about herself. Karen Carpenter didn't think she was enough. The fact that she could drum at all is awesome. The fact that she could drum and sing at the same time is freaking awesome. The fact that she could sing with such beautiful sounds, but no, she was meant to feel bad about her body and she died early because of it. It's so heartbreaking to me, and I was thinking about it today when I was at my, I can't remember who we were talking about. Oh, Whitney Houston. So many people who have such talents feel unworthy inside, and the, they, they have more than we could ever use, and that you're still unhappy. So notice this when you're aiming for something. And I say this, instead of aiming for money, aim for happiness. Because that's a that you can you can be happy with a lot less money than... Whitney Houston had or Prince or Tom Petty or any of these people who have sadly Kate Spade who have made it famous and yet still weren't feeling good you know Anthony Bourdain they're the ones that I think of how you want to feel in your life you know and this is why I life coach with the declutter because the declutter makes you feel the clutter in your life is making you not feel good and I want you to feel good in your body, in your life, in your home, in your very being before you leave this mortal coil. I want for all of us, I want for all of us to leave this planet feeling, yay, I did all the shit I wanted to get done and I had a good time doing it. I had a lot of fun and I got stuff done and I feel good and I'm leaving this planet when I choose to. And I'm feeling good about it. I want to be on my deathbed. And technically, I've already kind of done this. Not that I've died or anything. I have imagined myself even today. I don't know why. I was walking across the street. And I was thinking, if I, I got, if a double-decker bus crashed into us. I said, if I died right now. And I said, you know what? I would be psyched at what my life was. Right now, I am psyched about my life. Never mind, I have to wait. I'm not waiting. I'm not postponing the joy. I'm loving my life the way it is now. And the reason I love it so much now is because I started on this journey of coaching and life coaching and decluttering. I started this myself a number of years ago. Now, I have learned. So I'm cool with that. I will die happy. And I'm not going to die for like another 40 years because, oh my God. My grandmother lived to be 100 and something. Her sister is now going to be 100 in a few weeks. So I have longevity on one side of my, my family. But I also have, because I've been doing the family tree and stuff like that, I was also reminded how young my dad was and my aunt, his sister, were when they died and the health and struggles they had prior to that. So we're all a crapshoot. None of us know when we're going to die. And even if we say we're going to live to 100, quality of life, Quality of body, quality of brain, quality of stamina decreases as we get older. So let's freaking carpe diem, people. This is why I'm showing up and paying money to go to a gym to get exercise so my body can be strong. Not to like look good in a bikini. No, I get cellulite everywhere. But to feel good and strong when I go walk in, when I go on vacation. So notice, none of us know when we're going to go. So start to be cool with... If you were dying today, what if today was your last day on earth? 
What are some things that pop to mind you say you wish you could have done before you died? Write that stuff down and let's make a plan so you do them before you actually die. I am catching up right now. I will share this. I am um, leaving tomorrow for a trip. I'm sharing this personal story with you because I have screwed up in the past and I'm trying to right some wrongs. And I will share with you that the whole reason my husband and I are flying out tomorrow from Pennsylvania, Philly, to go to Detroit for three days is because three years ago, we were in Detroit. And you know what I did? This is, this is something I'm working on for myself, and I'll share this with you. I didn't pay money for something that I wanted. I cheaped out on myself. This is my phrase. I cheaped out on myself. I saw what I wanted, and I almost went for it. I was like hitting the button to book that cool hotel three years ago. And you know what happened? Fear. That's too much money. That cost a lot. Ah. Here's an interesting thing. So you know what I did? I didn't stay there. Instead, we stayed someplace lower. I thought it would be okay. And the moment we checked in, I was like, I don't like this place. It's got creepy brown carpet. And I'm the one who picked it. It's got creepy brown carpet. The room is small and dark. It kind of smells weird. The lobby is yucky. It's far away from all the stuff we want to do. I made that choice. I am redoing it this week because you know what? And here's the funny thing. I didn't feel good about the choice and it affected other things. Now it's costing us so much more money than if we had just done it right the first time. So I was cheap. I was, I was short-term cheap when I should have just spent the money then, felt good about it, and then we wouldn't maybe have to go to Detroit. I am so excited to be able to show up in a better energy as opposed to feeling like, oh, I don't belong in that bougie hotel that we're staying at. Instead, I'm going to walk in being like, I love this. I feel good here. You know why? Because I have grown. I have changed in the last three years. I now, instead of feeling like, ooh, we're here as the poor people, I'm going to be like, I love it. I hang out in places like this all the time. It's just the energy in my, in my body, my demeanor, my feeling, my security in myself that I am worthy of spending the money on a nice hotel that also could be compared to somebody else so inexpensive, but it's all perspective. So I share this stuff with you, okay, to put things into kind of a perspective because none of us know how much time we have. So let's make the most of it. And I say this not to say, so therefore, go down in your basement and clean out your clutter. But you've got stuff in your life. You've got clutter in your life that's dragging you down. Jettison that stuff so you can be more buoyant. Pretend you're on a boat. Your life is instead of a car. Your life's a boat. And you're, you're weighed down with all this stuff, so it's hard to move, you know? Notice these things. What you don't want, pitch it overboard. Share it with another boat going by. The lighter, you, the lighter stuff you have, it's like tomorrow when I'm going through the, um, the airport. This is a really cool thing. Again, I will share from my own brain and my own heart to you because maybe this will help you. I, am, I have seen people dragging heavy suitcases through the airport, struggling to lift them up, struggling to go through this, struggling, 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 lifting things, a suitcase of stuff that they feel like they need to bring with them. I think of life in the same way. Now, we all need a certain amount of stuff to live comfortably, but what I love, and I had this image of myself, and I shared this with my husband a couple, a few months ago, Years ago, I had an image of myself kind of confidently, breezily walking through the international, um, the international concourse in Philly's uh, Terminal A with nothing but my easily wheeling carry-on and a big old smile on my face, confident that I had whatever I needed in that little bag. I wasn't struggling and trying to lift and being like, but what if I need this and what if I need that? No, I was a I was a confident, feeling good international traveler. That's, a, that's me now. It is. I saw that in my head. I wanted to be that. And I, I leave you, I, I, I share that image with you. Because what kind of luggage are you lugging around with you? What are the things that are dra slowing you down, making it more difficult for you to do the things you want to do? You can unpack your luggage and reduce the size of your suitcase at any point. 
okay? So just notice these things, and you can do something about it. Now, again, the quality and quantity of items you have in your house is completely up to you. So Rochelle says, it's hard. You know, it's hard for Rochelle because even some of the stuff I like, there's just not room for all of it. So I, I just suggest this. When you say there's not enough room for what I love, you can change the space that you have in a certain way. Or prior to that, maybe go through and just check do a, do a pulse check. Check yourself today for sweatpants. Oh, I wish I could find that video. Check yourself today and say, these are things in the past that I wanted and I said I wanted. Do I really need them today? Do I really want them today? Do I want them to come along with me in the future? Check in with yourself. You may come up with, yes, I still want that. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. If that's the case, then, then and only then, talk about how you store or display things. But what you may find is you may have needed or wanted something in a certain chapter of your life. And maybe you have evolved, you have changed as a person, and you are no longer that person you were in the past. That is totally okay. We are meant to evolve, which means to change and grow in a good way. So are you the same person as you were in the past? No, I'm not the same at all. I've got wrinkles, I've got cellulite, I've got fat, but I've got heart and confidence. These things, I didn't have a lot of this. I had some, it's a different kind of balance every day. Okay, so I just ask you, all decluttering really is, is checking in with yourself and saying, is what I have now reflective of who I want to be? Who I am right now, is this the evidence? I was thinking about this too, you know? Yeah, Kim, Kimmy L is saying, we are doing a home renovation, so boxing stuff up, and it all won't make it back afterwards, okay? Notice, you've already made a plan. You've made a decision in your head that says, we're packing this stuff up, but it's not all coming back, you know? Yeah, and Lindberger is finding out when you, when you travel, most of the times I don't even use all the stuff that I, say, I brought with me. Most of the stuff, I don't even use all the stuff I brought in my suitcase. I will share this. Even with my carry-on, there are things that I don't wear. I, caught, I have a tiny carry-on because I want to be ready for international travel and popping, oops, excuse me, <laughs> popping it up in the, in the thing, right? And it's such a freeing feeling to trust that whatever you have is the right amount for you. I don't care if I, I often will rewear my clothes when I'm traveling because I would much rather rewear my clothes than drag along an outfit for somebody who I don't even know to see me in because I don't care about being judged if I'm seen in the same clothes. You've seen me, look at me. All I freaking wear is black t-shirts and you guys don't know if I have multiples or just one that I wear all the time, okay? Um, so just notice this stuff um, about yourself and... I hope what I'm saying is resonating with you, you know? So there we go, LBD, rock star. I am a rock star. Pink, I freaking love her. All right, so user 1963, notice, I became a clutter bug when my financial situation drastically changed. Now, here's a really interesting thing. Just with that, this is why I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, because you have a story of when you're clutter bugging changed drastically when your financial situation changed notice what could have happened a couple of things just with that sentence you could have got you could have won the lottery and bought all the stuff you wanted oh my financial situation changed and i got all this money and i spent it on a lot of stuff or your clutter system you became a clutter bug when you didn't have a lot of money so therefore you were trying to hoard things around you to make yourself feel safe Notice in both of those instances, you were doing something that you thought was going to make you feel good. Now, we do things to make ourselves feel good. We often buy things to make us feel good. Or we keep and hold on to things to make us feel good. The question is today, does the stuff you bought, brought into your life, does that continue to make you feel good? Or is that a temporary fix? Only you know that about you and each thing is going to be different. So notice this stuff. Yeah. 
and then notice what works for you, do more of it. Notice what doesn't work for you, break it apart and change it for the better. <laughs> I love it. Farm Girl says, yeah, my new mantra is that we're all going to be dead. Why do we worry about people judging us? You know what? Yeah, because when you pick, nobody else is judging you, nobody else is even looking at you. I learned this way too late in my life. You know who's judging me? It's me. You know who's judging you? Is you. You know? The fear. But what if you wear the same thing? They're all going to laugh at you. They're going to think you're poor. You only have one dress. I don't care. I do have more dresses. But even if I only had one dress, I'm keeping it in good shape. I look at it. I choose to feel good even if I own that one dress. That power is something nobody can take away from you. But you have to build it on inside you. That power of you can't make me feel a certain way. Only I can. And I can choose to make myself feel good or feel like poop. Life coaching and decluttering. Two, two, two mints in one. You know? All right, so hair and nail ladies. Mine is needing something and regretting that I just threw it away. Now, I know that feeling. And so does 1963. Um, I know there's a video on my TikTok page where this happens to me. I can't remember what the thing was. Frankly, at this point in the back, it doesn't matter. It might happen. You guys, I will let you know, as a decluttering life coach, it is distinctly possible that when you declutter, in the future, you may say, ah, crap, I wish I hadn't gotten rid of that thing. So it's going to happen. But what I want to do is, before you release something, get rid of something, go through a gut check. And a really, a realistic gut check. Not, I need this. What if I need it? What if I need it? What if I need it? Notice the clinging and the holding on because of fear. If I donate this, can I get the same result if I use something else? If I donate this, can I borrow one from somebody? Yeah. If I need any kind of kitchen gadget, man, oh, man, a shove it. I can ask a neighbor. I can ask a friend. If I donate this, could I buy one? If I needed to. Okay. Yeah, the carpet mat. Yeah, German made the carpet mat. Yeah, no, what I'm thinking of is actually, I, I don't know what it was. It must have been, you see, isn't it great? I can't even remember these things that I was afraid was going to happen. The thing I was afraid of happening happened. I, I was like, I gave something away. I was like, oh, crap. Now I need it. I don't even remember what it was, you guys. Notice the things you're afraid of. In the future, you're not even remember what it is. You know, yeah, Susan Porter is saying, I've been decluttering for well over a year and have yet to need something I thought I would need. And isn't it a wonderful feeling to realize I don't need, I am not in need. Whatever I have feels just right to me. It feels good. You know, notice this stuff. All right. So Vivi has a thought, a thought in your head. Notice this, people. Head, heart, hands. They go in that order. Oh, TikTok is reminding me. I literally have like two minutes. It's telling me to do this little puzzle piece thing. All right, we get like two minutes. So I'll share this with you. Surface, stored, and sentimental. Head, heart, and hand. So notice Phoebe has a story. So-and-so gave this to me. They want to see it and gold plate it. They want to see it, so you are saving it for them. I know you don't want the thing, or else you wouldn't even mention it. Notice the tension. Oh, I get to use my, my rope. This little ropey thing here. Notice the tension that clutter causes, okay? This is my visual here. If anybody was looking at the, not looking at the camera right now or the, or the screen, now is a good time. Tension. They want me, they want to look at it. I don't want it. They want it. I'm keeping it for them, but I don't want it. You know how you resolve, a, a t you know how you resolve tension? You pick a side. You either decide I'm going to let it go. Actually, for me, I'm going to let it go because I want it and I don't really care if they see that I don't have it. Or I'm going to choose to keep it, but I'm going to feel good about keeping it. It's not going to be a push me, pull you. Notice how tension is when there's two things pulling at each other. Resolving the tension means deciding on what side you want to be on. Now, I'm always on the side of you and love and what you want. I don't care about the other person. I'm here for you. So I say, you be here for you. And you say, say, I don't want it. If they say it, say, oh, thank you. That was so nice of you. But I don't want it. It didn't work out for me. 
Okay, Cat is checking in. I love it. Cat is checking in and saying, kitchen and lots of other tasks keep complete with my patented Beth blinders. I bought myself a clear mind for today. You know, notice these things, people. You know, I love it. Now, there's still stuff going on, but I get a coach, so I'm going to sign off. I will see you guys later. If you want to know when I'm tuning in next, hop on my uh, Destination Decluttered mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com, and um, see the schedule. Okay? Bye. Boop.